I'm alive. My baby is alive. This shout for joy is what expectant mothers hope and pray for. However, this is not the case all of the time due to the myriad of obstacles. On today's edition of Better Eat Today, maternal health is on our radar. Beaming our searchlight on this topic is to draw the attention of policymakers to squarely address it. Judging by the alarming statistics of maternal death in Nigeria, a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist is our resource person today, and we shall get to meet her in due course. My name is Yetunde Jayola. A break beckons. Please stay tuned. My neighbor, she died as a result of a given belt. She put to bed through seahorse and she was in coma for a good three days before she gave up. We tried to make inquiry the cause of her death. Some people said it's negligence from our own part, because based on what we heard from the, a very good friend, they said days before she went to the hospital that she has a swollen leg, and people have been advising her, go to hospital for checkup. She was like, it's nothing, we go down. They said she should walk around and uh, no believing on all those non-professional medical advice. I witnessed one around Medjugorje, one of the sites I work, one of the construction sites I worked. In Barugu to be precise, we lost the little. In fact, I witnessed a man, a pregnancy came and then after about how many months it was, she was supposed to be delivered complications and then they lost her eventually. It was really hard for the family and especially the husband because they were young couples. In pregnancy, there are certain things the woman shouldn't do, should do, should be encouraged to do. And then when it comes to area of uh, uh, nutrition, as in feeding, uh -huh. so those are some of those. Uh, the, when I heard about it, I know it's as a result of lack of care. Some women that used to see them in one place and say that because of money, let me try my best. That's how, when they will lose their life. Don't try and deliver in your house. Try and go to the hospital. But some women, when they are pregnant, they will not take their drugs. They will not go to Atinenta. If you watch it, Atinenta help us a lot because they will teach you a lot of things. But when you do not go to Atinenta and you sit them at your house, in your house, and say that God will help you, God will not help you. We try our best to go to Atlanta and learn other things from hospitals. Because those who, those who are working in the hospital, sincerely speaking, those women, they are trying. In the words of M. Russell Ballard, there is no role in life more essential and more internal than that of motherhood. Safe maternal health is germane to a fulfilling and rewarding maternal experience. Up next is a mini documentary on maternal health. Matters arising from this report will gain traction with the expert in the house. Maternal mortality in Nigeria remains one of the highest globally. A 2023 report of the World Health Organization, WHO, revealed that Nigerians accounted for 12% of global maternal deaths, stillbirths and neonatal deaths, the second highest in the world. Let's take our hands up and center. 
the high prevalence of maternal deaths in the country has been linked to inequities and in access to health services during pregnancy and childbirth. In the same vein, data from the 2018 Nigerian Demographic Health Survey also shows that only 43.4% of births in rural areas were assisted by skilled health care providers leaving just under every three and five women giving birth with the assistant of unskilled traditional birth attendants, TBS, community-based birth attendants, CBS, and other alternative health care providers. These unpleasant statistics call for concern and soul-searching from all stakeholders in the health value chain. Reversing this alarming trend as a tax that health authorities are the three tiers of government needs to prioritize in order to meet goal three of the sustainable development goals. Investing in education of women and girls will empower them to make informed decisions and choices in favor of improved maternal health. Let's go in and out. In, out, in, out, and in, and out. Nigeria needs to implement a comprehensive and integrated approach to tackle the persistent challenges bedeviling maternal and child health. Improve funding of the health sector, including provision of more hospitals, clinics, and primary health centers conducive working environment and attractive take home to encourage healthcare professionals to man existing healthcare facilities as against the seeking for greener pastures overseas. The need to up the attack with respect to public enlightenment and increased awareness cannot be overemphasized. An informed and adequately guided Nigerians readily shared old, destructive, and inhibitive practices, thereby adopting innovative, progressive, and forward-looking methodologies. With this, the sorry state of maternal health in Nigeria will be a relic of the past. According to Will Rogers, do not let yesterday take too much of today. Moving on to improving the lot of mothers to arriving at a paradigm shift is our aim on Better Yet Today. Dr. Sakina Raji, a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist with the National Hospital Abuja, is our specialist on the program. I promise you, you will find this interview revealing. Maternal health is the health of a woman during pregnancy, childbirth, and afterwards. It usually encompasses the sections of family planning, preconception care, prenatal, and postnatal care. That is um, family planning. We all know what family planning is. Preconception care is a concept that hasn't really been embraced in Nigeria, but refers to the care that a woman seeks when she plans to get pregnant. This enables us to ascertain health drugs, whatever drug she's taking, any condition she has, and the advices and treatment or changes in treatment that we institute before she now gets pregnant. And prenatal care is the care during pregnancy that the, we commonly refer to it as antenatal care. And then postnatal care is the care that she receives after pregnancy to ensure that she gets back to her pregnant state. Maternal health starts from before a woman gets pregnant. 
So before a woman gets pregnant, if it's her first pregnancy, then she should seek care, which we call preconception care. However, if she has been pregnant before, then she should try to space her pregnancy between her last childbirth and the next childbirth, which we will usually propose at least two years. So if she's going to get pregnant, she ought to wait at least a year plus before she tries to get pregnant. During this time, to ensure she doesn't get pregnant, she should be on contraception. Contraception is commonly referred to as family planning, of which there are various methods. This ensures that her body comes back to the normal milieu, like um, her blood is replenished, her nutritional status is ensured, and also she has been able to take care of her previous child, breastfed adequately, and the child has grown and probably started kindergarten. This will enable her to pull, pull through the challenges of pregnancy when she eventually becomes pregnant. So if all this has been done, before pregnancy, we advocate a concept called preconception care. Preconception, that is before she gets pregnant, she should visit the hospital and see her obstetrician who will assess her with regards to her blood status, be sure that her blood level is okay, there's no anemia, her nutritional status, she doesn't have any deficiencies, all her systems are okay by checking her kidney function, liver function. During this time, she must be on contraception. If she's on any medication, like probably for hypertension or diabetes or any other condition, these medications must be checked to ensure that they are safe in pregnancy or if they need to be changed to anyone that can be safe in pregnancy. And another important thing is that for every woman that wants to get pregnant, she must be on folic acid, which ensures that she is well protected and the child at conception is well protected. Because believe me, many women are pregnant for about two months before they even know that they are pregnant. And this two months is the most critical period of pregnancy, is the most critical period of development where abnormalities in the baby can occur. Getting pregnant too often or too many pregnancies, it's a very challenging situation in our country. Many of our women have a lot of pregnancies. We see women having nine, being pregnant nine times, ten times and all that. Or when the pregnancies are too often, child spacing is an important issue in Nigeria. You believe that family planning or contraceptive acceptance in Nigeria is very low as contraceptive prevalence in Nigeria is about a little over 16 percent unlike in other countries and considering the level of civilization in our country that Nigeria is about one of the lowest countries of contraceptive uptake so it is, makes women get pregnant too often and it doesn't allow the body to recover from an initial pregnancy to the next pregnancy so they face challenges like anemia nutritional deficiencies and then poverty is a major issue in Nigeria as well. So poverty uh, doesn't get women to have a um, balanced diet, so they might be deficient in some essential nutrition. All these problems can lead to miscarriages, early pregnancy, and then also challenges in pregnancy like malaria, anemia in pregnancy, infections in pregnancy, chronic infections like HIV, hepatitis. If not well managed before pregnancy, this can also lead to challenges during pregnancy where the woman is ill a lot during pregnancy. She will have anemia in pregnancy. She could be on admission too many times in pregnancy. And this could also lead to challenges in childbirth and even affecting the child, leading to probably perinatal morbidity or mortality. Also, women that have chronic diseases in pregnancy, uh, many Nigerians have poor health seeking behavior, which means that some people have hypertension and uh, probably they've been told one time and then they take their medication and then they don't follow up in the hospital and feel that the hypertension has gone. So getting pregnant in this state can lead to challenges in pregnancy, which can further lead to hypertension in pregnancy, 
which can lead to preeclampsia, which is a major cause of maternal morbidity and mortality, and also perinatal morbidity and mortality, because they are prone to complications, preterm births, miscarriages, and also postpartum hemorrhage if there's anemia before pregnancy. This can lead to postpartum hemorrhage during um, delivery and after and afterwards. My recommendation starts from the previous childbirth. Following a childbirth, women are advised to give birth in the hospital, you know, seek healthcare in the hospital and attend postnatal clinic. Because if they attend postnatal clinic, they'll be offered advice, they'll be given hematinics, which are drugs to prevent anemia. And these drugs are supposed to be taken for up to three months after pregnancy in order to replenish the blood level of a mother and this is to prevent anemia we also advise women to breastfeed their children because women that breastfeed their children have something we call most women have something we call lactational amenorrhea that is um, their menstrual cycle uh, doesn't resume some until after six weeks or some until after even the uh, after breastfeeding for two years and we also advise women to start contraception after six weeks after delivery and this contraception is that family planning services is available in all government hospitals in nigeria they should ask they will know and it's usually situated where antenatal clinic is situated so it's not difficult to find and there are various methods the hormonal method and mechanical method even the men can do family planning so this will enable women take care of their children space their children their body will come back to the normal health that it should be pre-pregnancy and then it can enable them plan their next pregnancy and how do you do that when they are now ready to get pregnant they should now attend preconception clinic this preconception clinic is available in many tertiary hospitals in nigeria okay i'm ready to get pregnant though so doctor will check them with regards to doing a lot of blood tests on their blood level on the kidney function on their liver function if they are taking contraception when they should stop it start them on things like folic acid and if they have hypertension or diabetes or any other chronic diseases that they are taking medicine for the doctor can check and to see that is this medicine safe in pregnancy or do we have to change it to when it's safe in pregnancy because many women after stopping contraception become pregnant and they don't realize it until most of the time like eight weeks after missing the second period and by this time development has already occurred so women are usually placed on folic acid from three months before they want to get pregnant so that the folic acid helps in child development during that initial period to prevent a lot of things like chromosomal abnormalities down syndrome spinal bifida and a lot of abnormalities in these children so that when they now become pregnant they will continue on these medications we also advise that when they eventually get pregnant they shouldn't stay at home once they miss their period they should come to the hospital to confirm this pregnancy it's not just by urine they test pregnancy they must do ultrasound because you need to know, be sure that the pregnancy is inside the womb and not outside the womb so early ultrasound is very important to know the site of the pregnancy and to also date the pregnancy some contraceptive method or even breastfeeding doesn't allow a woman to menstruate sometimes so sometimes they don't even know their last menstrual period and it's important to do an ultrasound very early in order to enable correct dating and following of her pregnancy during pregnancy a woman should come for antenatal as at when due whenever she comes she's checked her height is checked, her weight is checked, her tummy level, we call this infusiofundal height, is checked to ensure that the baby is growing as, at, as it is supposed to. And then they are given appointments. And also they are asked to take their hematinics, which is the common um, blood tablets that women take during pregnancy. Also, anti-malaria should be prescribed to them. And every time health education 
is given to these women as to how to go about their pregnancy, what they should do in preparation for their childbirth. This enables a woman to be empowered and prepared during pregnancy. We also encourage that the husbands or their partners should be involved in their pregnancy as they also have a major role to play in um, supporting this woman throughout their pregnancy experience. And it's also important to emphasize that women should ensure they give birth in the hospital because no two pregnancies are the same. So no matter how many times you get pregnant, you cannot determine how this pregnancy will go. So there's nobody that is too big for antenatal care or hospital delivery. Maternal mortality is a great menace in Nigeria. Nigeria ranks amongst the top three countries for that have extreme maternal mortality with over 1,000 maternal deaths per 100,000 live births. This is very, very high and way beyond the recommendation of the Sustainable Development Goals of 17 deaths per 100,000 live births by the year 2030. This is 2024. And as of 2020, this was the statistic. utmost appreciation to Dr. Sakina Raji for her insights and I hope you gained one or two things from the interview. Next on our line of are important tips for safe maternal health. Thank you for keeping faith with our program. Tips for safe maternal health. Take responsibility for your health during pregnancy. This implies eating well, staying active and fit, getting rest and limited stress as much as possible. Learn as much as you can about pregnancy and birth and working with your care providers to get the care you need and when you need it. Learn the important things you and your baby's bodies are prepared to do around the time of birth and how to support them. Get the best labor support possible. Good labor support goes a long way to helping you cope with the physical and emotional challenges of labor. Such support has been shown to help reduce the chances of C-section, the need for pain medication, and feeling of dissatisfaction about the birth. Can we all stand right now? And Empower women. The low social status of women and girls often translate into less education, which means they often don't know where to access maternal health care or seek remedies where they are denied care or their rights are otherwise violated. Provide access to contraceptives and safe abortion when necessary. As crisis and conflict settings often have higher rates of maternal mortality and morbidity from unsafe abortions, the need to ensure that all women have access to a range of contraceptive options so that they can prevent unwanted pregnancies. Get men involved. Safe motherhood is the responsibility of both men and women. Antenatal care sections give men the opportunity to be involved in education about care of the newborn, contraceptions, and limiting family size. Tackle child marriage. Adolescent girls are often exposed to an increased rate of child marriage in crisis settings and is often seen as a way to protect them in the face of extreme instability. It is essential the child marriage is addressed to reduce the maternal mortality rate for adolescents and guarantee their rights. Yes, so I stopped. They really got my attention.
reversing the challenges in maternal health in Nigeria is achievable. All that the stakeholders in the health value chain needs to do is to transform their wishes into actions. We have come to the end of this edition of Better Year Today. Remember, you can watch this as well as previous editions of the program on youtube.com slash NTA series slash Better Year Today. See you next time on the program for an equally educative, informative, and enlightening edition. I remain Yetunde Jayola. Do stay glued to our channel for more compelling content. Bye for now.